Wednesday morning, we've been on the boat for a week now. <laughs> We had a really good sail all day yesterday. So before we get into this story, we'll take a minute to introduce ourselves. We're Stephen Vendy, a Scottish and Czech couple with a serious passion for travel. We've been travelling together for over seven years now, and last year, whilst travelling through Canada in our truck camper, we dreamt up the idea that we would like to continue those travels aboard our own sailboat in the future. Slight problem. At that point, we didn't know how to sail, and we knew absolutely nothing about boats. So we travelled over to the coast of British Columbia and started wandering around some marinas. We bought sailing books, we read and we watched everything that we could about sailing and we wandered around some more marinas. We chatted to anyone we could about boats and we posted on some local Facebook groups until eventually we found someone to take us out for a day sail. This was our first experience sailing in Canadian waters and from this day on we were hooked. We decided to move to Vancouver Island and look for a job in the marine industry. We figured this would be a great way to learn more about the boating world before buying our own boat. We walked around some more marinas until we found ourselves a job. And along with this job, we managed to somehow find ourselves a boat and a liveaboard slip in this marina. We spent a bit of time cleaning it up we packed up our stuff from the truck and moved aboard. Through the job and through living in the marina, we met a bunch of incredible people and got the chance to sail on a variety of different boats. But, after a couple of months of winter weather in Canada, we decided that learning to sail in a warmer climate would be more suited to us. And so we packed up again and hopped on a flight down to La Paz, Mexico. We picked this destination specifically with the intention of finding a crewing opportunity to sail over to mainland Mexico. This would allow us our first taste of offshore sailing, but without signing up to an ocean crossing where we would be weeks at sea. And so that brings us to here. When we arrived in La Paz, we put a post on Facebook, we left a note on the notice board at the marina, and we joined the morning cruiser net via the clubhouse VHF. After a few days, we were contacted by Darrell. He was looking to sail over to Puerto Vallarta, exactly where we were looking to go, and he already had another crew member signed up. This is Colleen. She was here for the same reason. Having only ever sailed coastal before, she was looking for her first experience on the open sea. She's great, we got on really well, she's got lots of fun stories to share, and we became really good friends over the course of the week. So that was us. We had an excited and nervous crew assembled, a calm and confident captain, and we were ready to embark on our voyage across the Sea of Cortez aboard sailing vessel Medea. So, good morning guys. Here we are, the trip begins. Yesterday we provisioned the boat. This morning we picked up the anchor from the anchorage outside La Paz Marina. We've just stopped by the fuel station, filled up with diesel and some gas for the dinghy, and we're on the move. When we pulled into the fuel dock there, M5 was sitting on the end dock, which is the largest single-masted sailboat in the world. We've seen it a few times in Victoria and here actually, but we've never seen it so close. It's just something else, absolutely insane. Cold? Freezing, so it is. Warm, Daryl? Of course, man. Says the Australian. 
as we motored north from La Paz, we couldn't pass on the opportunity to get close up with some seals and sea lions. Just off the coast, near the popular beach of Playa Balandra, lies the small island San Rafaelito. It has a small coral reef and is a popular spot for sea lions who use the island to relax and reproduce. We heard the inhabitants are pretty friendly and so we decided to go and say hello. With nowhere to anchor Medea, we left clean in charge as the three of us jumped in the dinghy and cruised over. Our intention of snorkeling with them soon faded when we felt the water temperature, but we were happy enough to bob in the dinghy and watch them from there. Oh, it's the waves coming, is it? Oh. Is that what they're jumping about? Oh, We couldn't work out if they were being playful or defensive and we didn't want to disturb them any more than necessary. Getting this experience in this way gave us an instant respect and appreciation for the sailboat life. Without a sailboat, the only other way to get here would have been an organized tour and this for sure wouldn't have given the same sense of serenity. Let's take a quick look at our proposed route before going any further. Here you can see Mexico and the Sea of Cortes. As previously mentioned, we set off from La Paz at the bottom of the Baja Peninsula. From here we set sail to the breathtaking, uninhabited islands of Espiritu Santo. Unfortunately, upon arriving, we discovered a problem with the propane on board. Hey, it wouldn't be real boat life without a few setbacks along the way, and so we accepted our misfortune, quickly turned around and headed back down towards civilization. We dropped a hook for the night here in the dreamy anchorage of Pichilingu. The following day, me and Captain Darrell taxied back into La Paz to source parts for the propane, and the girls spent a day soaking up the sun in the anchorage. By late afternoon, our issues were resolved and we were ready to set sail again, hopping back up the coast to play a Balandra. Stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away. Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? So, we've had a day of running about doing chores today because of problems with the propane, but we've finally got to our anchorage now. And what a place! So beautiful and peaceful here. How come the sky? If you watched last week's video, you'll have seen us here before actually, that is the Playa Balandra beach that we were at and we hiked up to the top of there and the top of there and we flew the drone over here so you might have seen this already in last week's video but how much better is it when you're out here? Oh, so nice to be arriving by boat, for sure. Cheers guys, yeah. see you in the morning. So we're just getting ready. We're gonna leave. Wind picked up crazy. So ready for sale. We've been on the boat for three nights now, uh, but this is uh, day number one of the crossing over Sea of Cortes. We have set off this morning from Playa Balandra and we're headed to Isla Isabella, which is about 300 nautical miles away. Um, we lost wind pretty much straight away, so if we're doing this speed it might take us a week, but we were hoping to do it in three days, so we'll see. Just 
getting some lures, Daddy. Oh. Have a fish on. Fish on. Oh, he's jumping. <laughs> I'm checking in from my first night watch uh, in the beginning of my watch the wind has picked up as we expected so me and Daryl have um, adjusted the sails accordingly and since then the wind has been pretty much um, coming from the sa same direction at the same speed so I didn't have to do any more adjustments and then Captain went back to sleep and uh, now it's about five in the morning. I've still got about an hour to go. Um, just sitting up here <laughs> in the cockpit myself, whilst everyone else is asleep. Um, it's pitch black. <laughs> I can't really see anything at all. I'm just trying to scan the horizon as good as I can every 10 minutes. I'm just watching the AIS and the chart plotter for other vessels. There's only really been one tanker about tonight, so it's quite quiet. Um, I really thought that I was going to be more tired, but because I'm <laughs> quite nervous that I don't know what I'm doing yet, and I'm pretty much in control of this vessel at the moment myself. Um, I'm just looking out all the time and making sure everything's okay and keeping my fingers crossed I'm doing it right. So, go an hour to go and then I'll go and try to go back to sleep. I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. Oh! <laughs> Day two of the passage, we've got our wind now, all right. Yeah, so first two night watches were pretty uneventful because we were still motor sailing. And then at three o'clock in the morning, the wind picked up and we now have this unpleasant swell hitting us from the back apparently it's nothing in compared to atlantic crossing but <laughs> <laughs> feels pretty horrible <laughs> yeah i don't know if this is gonna show the swell hitting the boat we're also like really healed over like this been like this for the last 12 hours. Even Daryl to do the cooking and the dishes. Oh yeah, we've got our captain who doesn't get seasick. Colin's just chilling there. So wildlife report, what have we seen so far? Some whales this morning, probably humpbacks. Humpbacks maybe. Huge ones. Yeah. No idea what distance out, but a fair distance out and leaping completely out of the water. And yeah. Super cool. Last night we saw the plankton By lighting up. Yeah. That was cool. And yesterday when we were still motoring, we saw the sea sting. Lines. No, the devil race. Devil race. Uh, the chilling on the surface with the tips up. You can see the white tips poking out of the water and we also saw some doing flips so when the sun shines on it they look kind of silvery that was pretty cool as well a few birdies flying about some lone little birdies called the tuna that's about it and something still constantly swims 
and there are our transducer because we are supposedly in 2000 meters of a depth but transducers coming back with a depth of 20 sometimes 12 sometimes 15 so who knows what's swimming under <laughs> Here's Wendy attempting to do the dishes. Peeled over. So we've just finished dinner, and that for us felt like eating dinner on a roller coaster. Last night's passage was a bit more smooth, but thanks to Captain Darrow here, we've still got nice home cooked meals even in these conditions so we've got a second reef in the main before dinner getting kind of rough out here now and we've got a storm coming up behind us so we're changing course towards Mazatlan now Wednesday morning now and we're just coming into Mazatlan. We're going to have the day here and then set off early tomorrow morning to head down to Jukala. Sea's got nice and calm since we got to about 20 miles offshore. Um, we're just motoring in the last way now. We've been at sea for 48 hours now. Rock Island, it's got a lighthouse on the very top there and just at the back there, I don't know if you can see high rises of the city of Mazatlan So, let's go and explore Mazatlan Finally walking after a few days in the boat, it feels nice. <laughs> they have these funny taxis here in Mazatlan. They take them to the bottom of that hill which we saw when we came in to the harbour and they're doing the lighthouse walk. Uh, we got about 10 offers already but they don't know that we actually are looking forward to walking <laughs>
guys. So we left Mazatlan this morning. We're heading for Chikala next. We got a really good sleep in the anchorage last night. That was the first time in three or four nights that we've had a good sleep. So everyone's in good spirits today. We've got 136 nautical mile sail to Chikala. Right now we've got about 14, 15 knots behind us. Downwind sailing, just got the head sail out. No main at the moment. Uh, and we'll probably get there tomorrow morning. Tomorrow midday maybe even, depending on how this wind goes. So all day sailing today, all day sailing during the night again on the watches and arrive in Chikawa tomorrow, hopefully for a relaxing day at anchor again tomorrow before we then make the final push down to La Cruz in the Puerto Vallarta Bay. So Chef, how's the burgers going? Fine. Nearly there. Oh. Fish on, bit of excitement. Oh, it's a yellow pen. No? no? So that's another one on, it's been like in space of two minutes we had three fish on, lost two, brought one in, now we've got another one. <laughs> Number four, maybe, yeah. Back in. <laughs> straight, straight after, like, a, like a literally 30 seconds, we've got another one on. <laughs> I always thought watching YouTube videos that they just made this up. <laughs> one in the water, the next one's coming out. <laughs> One minute later. Still cleaning up from this one. Put one on each line. Number, Number six. six. Number seven coming in. Eight, no? Eight, is it? <laughs> Cleaning process <laughs> is not even worth it. Definitely. Was it catching fish here? This is number eight coming in.
12 coming in. Okay, fish number 12. This time we think it's a mahi. Let's see it. Yes, here we go. <laughs> Wow, we've got a big mine! <laughs> and luckily for us, our skipper just happens to be a master chef as well, so <laughs> happy days! My, my dinner! <laughs> So we've had an awesome day today, the sailing conditions have been so much better, we're going with the wind, we've got the swell coming right behind us, so it's not cock screwing us round like it was the last couple of days, much smoother, we're doing a little less speed than before, we've been averaging about four and a half, five knots today, so it's going to end up taking us a little longer than we thought to get down to Chikala, uh, we were thinking, we left this morning and we were thinking we would get there tomorrow morning, but the estimated time of arrival is now showing tomorrow late afternoon so we've got the rest of today all night and most of the day tomorrow to sail down but we've just been lying here on the deck sunbathing and reading books and chilling out and then we got a shout fish on in the cockpit and we ran back and we got 11 fish in a row and then this is the kind of thing that we saw on YouTube videos before and thought that it was just made up but this was really 11 fish one after the other just next, next, next where we just put the line in and the next one we just come straight back out again so then we had a break, we had a coffee for a while and stuff and then we got a mahi mahi on and it's 110 centimetres, absolutely beautiful fish so Skipper Darrell and also Chef Darrell is now down preparing Mahi Mahi for dinner. So it doesn't get much better than this to be honest. And it's convinced us we're definitely getting a boat. And these are the days that you want. So what have we got here, Chef? So we got a little bit of mahi ceviche with some uh, avocado and red onion, lime juice, fresh mahi that we just caught uh, about two hours ago. And uh, just gonna enjoy that with some tortilla chips. So here it is, mahi mahi for dinner tonight. Morning guys, so we're on Friday morning, we've been on the boat for a week now, we're just approaching Chikala, we had a really good sail all day yesterday, the wind died during the night so we motored for a bit, uh, and we're motor sailing just now with the head sail out, and we've only got a few miles to go before we get to Chikala, and the sun's out and it's warm, we've seen a few whales, anything else to report?
So after 30 odd hours of sailing down the coast from Mazatlan, we reached our anchorage here in Jakala. What a spectacular spot it is. Upon arriving here, we also deployed a stern anchor. This would allow us to stay in one fixed position, not swiveling round during the night and avoid getting hit by a side-on swell. We've done this in the hopes of achieving a peaceful night's sleep. And once this was set up, we jumped in the water for a swim and then headed ashore for an explore of the town and a couple of beers. So Chakala is just a small village it seems, it's got a beautiful beach and bars on the beach but this is the only street and there is not very much here, just few shops and more restaurants uh, and it's just a dirt road <laughs> but it's really cute. So how do you like Chakala? It's awesome eh? Cool little beach town. There's the boat just out there. We just dinghy the shore over here. And had a beer along at the end there and wandered through the back streets. We're just going for a beer at another place at this end of town now. It's just a tiny little town but it's super cool eh? Cool vibes. Yeah. Early start this morning, 6 o'clock, we're leaving Chukala, sun's just rising, it's quite foggy today, but seas are looking calm so far, so fingers crossed, the swell calm down. So that's what we're waiting on to complete our Sea of Cortez wildlife experience out here. I guess we probably still don't have any whales for you guys to see but we've seen tons of whales but you can never get them on camera and they're always too far away for the GoPro and by the time I run and get the other camera they're gone and stuff so but and we saw a turtle this morning um, but yeah we've been waiting to see dolphins all this time so that was cool. They weren't here for very long again by the time we managed to find the camera and stuff, but awesome. There's pilot whales just in front of us. There's also birds, so it seems like they're feeding. You might be able to see them, they're really close. Wow. 
<laughs> oh, that's amazing. Hello. That's incredible. Oh. Where did he go? Wow. Oh, no way. This is unbelievable. They're right here. I could actually see the light. Whoa. <laughs> Side. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This is incredible! <laughs> oh, this is amazing! You're just going right under. Hello. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so show's over. Wow. We were all just sunbathing and Captain spotted them and altered the course and then they came even closer. Pretty amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There is some baby ones and big ones. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Oh my god, I don't know where to look first. I just swam right under the boat. <laughs> it's right here, it's coming up beside you. Really? Oh yeah! Do you see it? Oh my oh, god! Oh, Look, no, he's really gonna good. come, he's gonna come out. Whoa! <laughs> oh, oh yeah, they are actually. This is crazy! Oh my god! They are actually just swimming along the boat! Oh. Where are they? Right here! <laughs> look! Look at his face! <laughs> They're just playing about! <laughs> this is so awesome! <laughs> Hello. Look, this one, he might come out again. Get your camera ready. Look, look at their white tummy. <laughs> okay, other side, quick away. <laughs> and under again. <laughs> this is crazy. I think they're heading that way, honey. Oh, he's right here. Yeah. That one. Whoa. <laughs> we couldn't have asked for a better end to the trip. This absolutely magical encounter occurred just a few nautical miles from our end destination. After we waved goodbye to those majestic creatures, we furled in the sails, switched on the motor and cruised into La Cruz anchorage. Just like that, we were dropping the anchor for the final time. 500 nautical miles later and this trip was over. We sat in the cockpit with a complex mix of emotions. A blend of pride, accomplishment, relief, satisfaction and relaxation. 
we had just successfully completed our first ever multi-day passage, our first ever night watch, and our first time sailing in blue water. If we can be sure of one thing, it's that we'll be going searching for more of this. We'd like to give a huge thanks to Darrell for allowing us this opportunity and for safely navigating us across the Sea of Cortez. We'd also like to give a massive thanks to you guys if you're still here watching this. As we edit this video, we're also in the process of arranging our next crewing experience. So, if you enjoyed this short film and you'd like to see more, be sure to give it a like, press subscribe and hit that notification bell. It won't be long until we're back with our next instalment.